My case was a little bit unique. Not many people knew anything about it. I must have been around 10 and 11 when I started to notice the difference between me and my friends. Wake up straight onto the floor. I'd have to stretch for about half an hour before I could stand up. When I'd go upstairs, I'd practically crawl upstairs. <laughs> Sorry. So I signed up to the bone marrow registry when I was 17. I think there's a lot of stigma about the fact that it's a really painful procedure. It's not. There's something called peripheral stem cell donation, which is how I donated. And then it's basically just a cannula in each arm. And that's the most common way that it's donated now. With different doctors, there came different solutions. My other treatment had just failed, so that's when I met my doctor and we talked about the transplant. You go into isolation. When your parents come and visit you, they have to wear gloves, hair nets, aprons. You're completely in a bubble, so you have chemotherapy a couple of hours a day until basically everything is dead. That's when you have your transplant. Most people make half matches, so I was insanely lucky. I found out that she was like a sister match, which is almost unheard of. I was never expecting to hear anything again. I think it's quite uncommon to actually hear from your donor, let alone them be close enough to like meet up and see their full life like that. I don't think that happens very often. Surprisingly, we don't talk all that much about the transplant. We meet up. She comes to all big family occasions now. She's just a part of the family now. That's the way it is. A mix between like a best friend and a sister. We got matching tattoos because she's got the, the same DNA as me now, so she kind of is my sister. I, I'm very grateful for it. I wanted to be a dancer. I couldn't. I wanted to work with animals, and I couldn't. But now I can. <laughs> I definitely hope she knows, because it is, ultimately, it's why I'm here.